Good evening guys, it's Darren from Juice Media and uh, tonight we're in Old Creaky with um, my good buddies the Cold Stairs. We have Chris Fresh and Brian. How are we guys? Hey, doing good. Yeah. So, um, who's played Edinburgh before? No, no. no. So this will be an experience for you. Um, the venue is a little cool venue, a nice cave style thing. When you guys are rocking out, you'll see your paint coming off the ceiling. Oh, wow. That's when you know you've had a good night because <laughs> the paint and stuff and the, the plaster comes off the ceiling. So awesome. when you're rocking out and it comes off, you know you've had a good night. If not, they will tell you your shit. So <laughs> you, have, you have to do good, boys. You have to do okay. good. So, how has it been? How has the tour been? Is it visiting some weird places and weird venues? Good it's, people? Yeah, absolutely. The people have been the best part. The people uh, of the United Kingdom have just been uh, super nice and kind. And uh, that's, been, that's been amazing. That's always the funnest part of touring is meeting different people from around the world. And uh, the venues are always a mixed bag, small ones, big ones, indoor, outdoor, you know, whatever. So, yeah. And uh, obviously, Bryce is the new kid on the block. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Six month virgin now. Um, how have you fitted into the band? Have you, uh, have you embraced it with the boys? I'd like to think so, at least. Uh, you know, I mean, this is, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've been a fan of the band for years. Um, and so, you know, you have to see that as well. well That's sure, true. sure. But that is the truth, though. Uh, I remember. Years ago, they were playing in a bar that's right in my backyard almost, and so I walked to the venue to see them for the first time, and I was a fan ever since. And you know, I uh, when Chris called me up, said they were kind of looking at a bass player. I, was, you know, I, didn't, I didn't really believe it at first. You know, I, I figured he's wanted to do a side project or something. When he said it was for the Cold Stairs, I was like, all right, let's do it. You know, let's go. I was all in. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah. and how's what was the dynamic of adding the bass? from you guys you've always been a two piece what was the thought train was it just another dimension to the sound or was it just the fact that you wanted to broaden the band just to get a little bit closer to the records I'd play bass on the records and it always had a you know a bass part that was maybe uh, at least sometimes deviating from the guitar so we just had to modify some stuff live and we did that for almost 10 years and we just felt like it was time to to have another option there live, you know? yeah, and that seems to have gone down really well. And the album, Ev Shoes, is just an incredible piece of work. Oh, thank you, it's an incredible piece of work. I've been listening to it all day. I've been driving because I've come from Glasgow, uh, and you know, and yet you've got a did I say a, a unique sound. What's your favorite song? Do you know what? I don't have a favorite song if I'm being honest. Because for me, like I've only just got into you guys. I've only just got into you guys um, in, the, in the last probably two, three, two, three, four weeks. Okay, cool. You know, I ha I'm not. I'm a coasters virgin, um, <laughs> and I say that in the best possible taste, people. Um, and tonight we'll break my duck. So uh, tomorrow I'll be raving about these guys. I'll be wearing the t-shirt. Um, and I'll be promoting the hell out of them. Um, but I'm just looking forward to the show. Um, you know, as I say, when I was driving through, you just, I like my music loud in the, in the car, you know, and I'm like, wow, I, I bet this is going to be awesome when it get up close tonight. We hope so. Yeah. yeah, I just, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so, what's next for you guys? When does the tour here finish? July 2nd. So and then so next week what's the what's the plan back home, chill or are you back in the studio? Or what's the? Uh, we have a new album recorded uh, and finished, so we'll go we'll go back home and for for a few days, and then we'll head back out again a couple of dates in the states, a uh, little Texas run, um, and then some stuff up on the east coast. Uh, not too long after that, back to Greece and Turkey for the key. Keeping the Blues Alive cruise with Bonamassa and a bunch of other great bands. Yeah. So, a busy year. Yeah, Joe's a matter of you guys, isn't he? He's a bit of a, bit of a fan. He, he's helped us a lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's great to have someone's stamp of approval of that caliber. But I think but I think for you guys, you know, you, you, you have your own, you have your own forum, you have your own 
um, unique sound. You know, yes, it is it's nice to have someone, you know, kind of endorse you guys and, and kind of take you on, on his wing. But I think the years of hard work for you guys, you two have paid off. You know, I, I, I really, tr I really truly believe that. I think so. I think to the point of Joe's digging us or whatever, you know, I, I think um, we haven't been to the level of a band like, let's say, Royal Blood or the Black Keys. You know, we had some moderate success, but I think some validation came from a lot of the people that we admired um, really took a liking to the band, you know, and really said they liked the records. And, um, you know, so we had fans at a show the other night. We didn't have a big crowd. And, um, been a great show and had great fans and they were all apologizing that more people weren't there so I think the people that have been advocate, advocates for the band and fans of the band that have helped you know try to help us it's been a validation to keep going keep yeah, yeah. Working, yeah absolutely um I think you're right you know at the moment I think there's a lot of people who still don't want to come out um or you get a lot of um maybe by what's it called the night when people and it comes and they go you know, I don't really want to go out. Yeah. You know, I, I'm very fortunate that you know that I get you know lots of guest tickets and stuff. Um, but I make it my, my my passion that when I come, I'll just buy merch. Or you know, I've got a, I've just bought a new I've got a new Jeep and it's got car play in it, so the, there's no CD player. Yeah. So I say to guys, don't give me CDs because yeah. I can't play them in my car. Yeah. Um, you know, and but I always buy merch T-shirts or a hat or something because. You know, you guys are traveling up and down the country, all over Europe, all over the world, and you know it's not you, you don't play for free. You know, so it's always good to give something back um, to keep you guys rocking to get this new album out. Do we have a Do we have a title for the album? Do we have how many tracks is it? That's a funny question that you asked. That we I think we recorded fifteen, and that was the initial set. Um, we're in discussions with the record label Mascot Records, is our label one. Deciding if we were going to do 12 or 15, and then um, also exactly when it might be released. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, they, they've got a plan, uh, I'm sure, for it. And um, our thing is now, I think, with digital, most people consuming the music digital, why not give them as many songs to listen to as you can? You know, we, we're advocates and, and lovers of going in the studio and making records, so it gives us another excuse to go in and go once and make another record if we put it out now. Yeah. You know, so. We'll see, we'll see how it plays out. And, you, and your preference would be 15? Because you want to give the, the, your fans as much of you as possible? As the, as the songwriter in the band, um, they songs are like movies, you know? Um, it's easier to be in the moment of the movie and think about the movie and, and have the feeling of that movie the day after, the week after. When you're six months after, it feels a little differently. Um, and so to me, I, I would rather have all 15 songs come out now because those 15 songs were in the moment, how I was feeling as that, I was writing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they don't necessarily feel the same six months later, whether on another record or not. But that's a, that's a personal thing to me. As a fan, the fan may, the fan may think completely different, the consumer, but you know, if I have my druthers, and sometimes if you have something important to say, and then you forget, forget to say it, or you get to, you're like, well, shit, I had something really important to say, and I can't remember. So I like to get it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're right. I think the fans, I think the fans will, you know, the, the album will come out, and they will, you know, buy the album. And I guess it, it all depends on you guys to say to tour. You know, so if you put an album out, like you put this album out last year, and people are going, one of the boys are coming. If it's a year's time, you then possibly have another album. Yeah, yeah. So people go, I like this album, but it's good to hear the new stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I guess that your diehard fans will always stick with what you've produced at the moment. You know, so you, you know that the, the, the latest album I think will be everyone's favourite because, like you said, it's in the now. Yeah. You know, when you've done it, you've probably put it out. People, you know, and I think the songs on it, people will resonate with a lot of the songs because, and, you know, you guys, you've got to stay cut as best you can, but with what you're feeling at that present time, it comes across with people, I think that's what people will, will feel yeah. when the record comes out, you know, and I guess and that then comes across in your live performance. 
Yeah, and the other thing is just um, we, we had this tour scheduled for the UK twice and had to cancel it. And I think you know, I personally am a little shell shocked by the lockdowns and COVID stuff. Um, if I did something in anticipation of, oh, well, we'll do this and then because next year we know we'll be back in the UK, well, there's just no guarantees for that. Yeah. And the easiest way for me to reach somebody um, in their mind, their heart, or whatever else is through a song, and it could it, it reach everybody around the world. So um, touring is selfishly a fun thing for us to interact with the fans, play the music for the fans. But I think if you're ever prohibited from doing that, the way that you know you can reach them is to continue putting up music. Absolutely. It's like a love letter from a girlfriend that's a, like, half the world away. It keeps the connections. Absolutely. I think I think you're absolutely right. I think the love of music, you know, for people to come out to live shows and see you guys doing your thing. Um, and for me personally, this is the best part of my job. Getting to know you guys, getting to know what you're all about, what makes you tick, what you know, what part you like. You know, which part you don't like of touring or being a band, being a record or promo stuff, you know, and th this is for me is a real big connection because I know that throughout, you know, the coming years I'll be friends with you guys. You'll be stalking you on Facebook and all that, and I'll be like, hey, man, with me, you know, you're going to be like, fuck you, know, get this guy away from me. But I, th this is just a chance for me to get up close and personal with, for me, a new rock band that I've discovered. That that you know that instantly you have you, you feel a connection with. So you know I, I I must say thank you so much for bringing out a killer record that kind of really sucked me in, you know, and, and made me want to come. Because you know I get invited to shows six times a week, and sometimes I go, you know, I can't be bothered out tonight, or you know, and I get pissed off when you don't get invited to a show. You're like, oh, I'm missing music, you know. And obviously the other night. I, I was invited to Barry Manilow. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Awesome. That was a, a, it was incredible. You know, seventy-three-year-old yeah. dude up there. <laughs> the funny thing was his face wasn't moving, which is quite strange right. when someone's singing. But, <laughs> but you know, it was a fantastic show. You know, and you just kind of think that, that people, you know, the people who want to come out and watch musicians play their thing. You know, and like I said earlier on. You guys are touring all over the place, you know, with your families and stuff like that. But I guess it's a necessity to keep your music alive. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I guess it is. And uh, I just want to say thanks, you know, people like you that, that enjoy the, the music and, and come out and support and try to bring other people out. You know, if it weren't for people like that, we wouldn't be able to do what, what we do. What you, you know, do we'd be in my well. basement, you know. Absolutely. Just, you know. I mean, we uh, th this this video will go to Australia, it'll go to America, it goes to New York, it goes to uh, a few other states, it goes all over Europe. Uh, I have some like 58 other outlets that we use. So we'll get you guys spread out there, far and wide, and get everybody into the cold stairs. Now, the other side, where does the name come from? Because where was that? What what kind of brought you to the in the cold stairs, what was that all about? Oh, the name. Um, well, we had a few ridiculous names. And the town that we come from has, is notorious for having bad band names. And I think um, twofold, we were both in, really into the Black Crows and they had a song called Stare at Cold, and, that, and I had that in the back of my mind. And the first couple of times that we played, we kind of had, um, you know, we kind of overdid it, like the, the really short man with the big car. We, brought a massive amount of amps just because we were two piece, you know. We wanted to make sure we sounded like more and, and the first first time we played we I told Brian afterwards or the name kinda of popped in and we had the cold stairs from the crowd. We didn't know if they loved it or what or if they hated it. They just looked kinda of stunned when everything came on. So that the name just kinda of stuck. And I think it's obviously done you really well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, listen, I know you guys have got dinner and stuff to get. I really appreciate your time. I just want to welcome you to Barnum's. I know you're going to have a great show tonight. I will get some merch, I'll get some pictures and stuff. Um, what I'll do is I will I'll put the interview on with the review. I'll do a full review. I'll do an introduction of the band. I'll do a song by song um, set list. 
and I do your names afterwards in the separate and then I put it out to that or that sort of thing. So, um, you know, and normally, you know, we can get a few thousand hits for each individual band that we do. So that would be 4,000, 3,000 other fans who want to be in this you know, American band who have came to Edinburgh, you know, and let the, let the paint and the, the plaster come off the ceiling. Now, if it doesn't happen tonight, boys, I'll be taking pictures of that. I'll be telling the guys, this band is shit. You said to take the plaster off the ceiling, so you need to play extra hard tonight. Extra loud and give us what we want. We'll do it. Baby. Thank you so much. Listen, not my, my absolute pleasure. This is uh, Darren from J Speed here with uh, Chris Rice and Brian on the cold stairs. Uh, they're getting ready to rock out uh, in Barnabas tonight. Uh, just want to say thanks for your time and uh, take it to you guys. Have a great show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Listen, my pleasure. I just. Uh,